at the dawn of day, Marie Laveau had passed away. In St. Louis Cemetery, she lays in a tomb. She was buried at night on the way to the moon. Oh, Marie Laveau. Welcome to my very first show, The Bloody Mary Show. Enter the spirit realm. Today we have a very special guest. She's an author, she's a storyteller, she's a medium and a ghost hunter. She's a native New Orleanian whose family's been here for over 10 generations. And her new book is just out. I mean, like literally just, just out, hot off the presses. We've got Bloody Mary's Guide to Hauntings, Horrors, and Dancing with Dead. True stories from the Voodoo Queen of New Orleans by Bloody Mary. So on that note, we are going to welcome to the spirit realm, none other than Bloody Mary herself. Welcome, come on in. Hi, it's really great to be here. Feels like home. <laughs> welcome, it's really good to see you again. You look happy. Uh, I guess you should be, your book's out. Uh, tell us a little bit about the book. Well, yeah, my book just came out. I'm very excited. Um, gosh, it's recording over 22 years of experiences about all the spirits in New Orleans, the famous ones and the not so known ones. It also kind of gives their side of view on things. And I'm a strong advocate for spirit rights. So I'm glad that this book is being published now. Took me a long time. I learned a lot from them, and the book itself is haunted. So a few people say, "You read it, see what pops up." What's different about your book than other books written about New Orleans ghosts? What's different about my book? I guess it's from inside the box. You know, it's also taking the side of the spirits, a side that is sometimes just forgotten. With all the TV shows and popularity around paranormal activity today, um, it seems that everyone wants to focus just on the dark and on how they can control spirits or put them under a microscope and experiment them and look at them as evidence. I try to put the humanness back in paranormal investigation, and that is the way that this book is written, as well as personal experiences and some helpful hints on what to do and what not to do, what I've learned directly from the spirits. Now, did you know your house was haunted before? Because I know later you found out that other people in the neighborhood told you stories about the house you moved into, but did you know all of that before you moved in? I wrote about that in the book. Mm, you never know when it's gonna be a hot cycle or a quiet cycle. You know, it's not haunted every minute of the day. And yes, I knew it was haunted before I moved here, in fact, it was the spirits that called me here. I didn't know how haunted it was till after I moved here. And uh, more spirits popped up as time went on. But yes, my house is haunted. So many of the spirits in New Orleans are famous. They were famous in life and they were famous in their afterlife. Do you only talk about those or are there other spirits you talk about too? Who's in the book? Who's who? Oh sure, I write about all the big ones. Sure, there's Marie Laveau, there's the Voodoo Queen, there's Jean Lafitte, the swashbuckling pirate or privateer as he preferred to be called. 
There is Madame Lalaurie, our infamous torture, and I called her a vampire too, for there definitely were blood baths of one form or another on Royal Street back in 1832. Uh, there are my favorites in there, like Julie, the octroom mistress, and the stray children spirits that I sometimes call my foster children. There's animal spirits, uh, there's personal family spirits, all which teach you lessons, and much, much more in, in the book. Now you've been a ghost hunter, a spiritualist, and a medium for a very, very long time, since your teenage years in town here. Uh, you're related to a lot of the ghosts, it seems, since your family bloodline's been here for so long. Uh, paranormal investigation has changed quite a lot, and I think you deal with it in this book from like a psychic investigator angle, or how do you deal with it in the book different than the way people used to looking at it at TV now? My whole life is a ghost investigation. It's kind of like my whole life is spiritual. I'm a priestess. There's no separation between the sacred and the mundane or the normal and the paranormal, in my opinion. I uh, share the many worlds that do surround with the spirit world. You know, uh, it's all part of one. So I do do kind of official ghost investigations in my house with other people that are interested that I'm trying to teach and help connect. But uh, I believe that everything is kind of, if you want to use the word investigation, or an adventure, because we are, we are not alone. Wherever you are, we are not alone. This is a very different kind of ghost book about New Orleans. So many people, especially people from outside the box, who've come to New Orleans and think it's cool, have written books. Very few people from inside the box, which actually deal with the spirits every day. I like to say one of the differences is I don't believe in one night stands. I believe in long term relationships with the spirits. Not just 24 hours we go do a ghost hunt, oh no I didn't get anything and go. No. I have long term relationships which reveal the intricacies of the personalities of the spirits give me time to help understand their needs as well as they to understand me. So the difference is in the detail I suppose you might say and the book is definitely detailed. So we have other segments of this show I'd like to invite you on, like maybe on a ghost hunt. I know you do that. Your own house, this house, is haunted, and we go on location to many different ones on all the upcoming shows. I'd like to invite you along and everyone else out there to enter the spirit realm directly. Thank you for inviting me to the spirit realm, Bloody Mary, and uh, congratulations on the Bloody Mary show. I her, you're going to be interviewing authors from all over and traveling and you're going to have not only the interview section but go on location in different places to contact with spirits or different people who are experts in their field on the occult or unusual paranormal aspects of their city or area. But I also want to invite you to the kitchen witch section or the swamp magic moments. There's a lot of things that uh, you should come to on my variety show. Oh, oh, the kitchen witch part, that sounds like fun. So you're gonna give advice to people on how to use natural things that are in their kitchen or easily accessible things for protection, for connection, and for offerings. And maybe slip in a couple of New Orleans recipes too? Sounds good. Okay, I can't wait to see that. More tasty. I want all of you to come and enter the spirit realm. All of it different. You have been called the Martha Stewart of the paranormal world. Well, come with me and we shall leave the spirit realm and go on to a spirit adventure. Paranormal awaits with Bloody Mary as we leave my home in Mid-City, a quiet neighborhood in New Orleans. We drive through it, but just a few blocks away, is the cemetery district. 15 graveyards lay in a small, short area. This is a crossroads of the dead. As we drive by, you see across the way Greenwood Cemetery. Greenwood Cemetery, it looks like there's been a breach. A breach in the gate happens far too often, unfortunately. It is as if the cemetery disappears some evenings and people just drive right through the gate as if it is not even there. This seems to be a spiritual occurrence occasionally, for when I come and bless the area, cleanse it, 
pray the spirits are at peace. It is then the next area a few feet down, a few feet down. It happens less often than it did right after Katrina, which was an uncanny amount of times. But unfortunately, it still does occur. There are many spirits in this area, for the whole area is haunted, not just the graveyard itself. It is people that walked by in the past and walked their pets. People that visited cemeteries in the past. People that jogged by, um, and of course, some of the dead that are buried within. There's the Elk Lodge guarding the edge. The 11th hour marks an esoteric symbol of the clock watching the area. Ironically, it stands for when the end is near, which for many, who would be that breach? It is. Greenwood Cemetery. All the others are all around. 15 that you can see. And that is the Katrina Memorial built on top of the old Charity Hospital Cemetery. You can see the eye in the hurricane. The 39 people never claimed for Katrina are laid to rest there. On top of nearly 50,000 other injured and dead from the Charity Hospital. Snugly below the ground. Look at all the other cemeteries. Keep going and you get to the richest one in North America. That is also something that New Orleans can claim with Metairie Cemetery. As we say, I own property in there for my parents and grandparents, and many friends are buried within. And the famous tomb that we will go to now is Josie Arlington's tomb. She was the queen of Storyville. Storyville was the first legalized red light district in the country from 1898 to 1917. And Josie, Josie was the queen. You can see here how her shadow awaits as we walk up to her tomb. It was said right after she was buried that the tomb glowed red, intimating she was in that eternal red light district down below. They secretly moved her to stop the people from coming, but that did not stop her from being known. But that's when the statue began to walk all by itself. Many spirits were at the tomb of Josie Arlington. Her private home is haunted, too. This is Josie, and remember, she's still at home. We're at Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop Bar, the oldest bar in the country, one of the three oldest buildings in New Orleans. We just met Joe, the owner. He wasn't a believer at first, but he has succumbed to the supernatural. We're gonna try to take a look inside. It's always been leaning back like an old easy chair, and it's not going anywhere. And it is very, very haunted. Let's try to go in through the back. But haunted in a good way. I call this the ghost watering hole. See if we can, it's very dark inside. Chimney. Oops, sorry. Before there was fire, they were the eyes that burst into flames. The piano bar, even the ladies room, is haunted. My dark, quiet corner has the most ghosts. <laughs> Though you can't see today. Courtyard. He's a control freak. I'm like, and then Sarah in a good way. Yeah. Everyone comes here to pose to read Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop Bar. Brick and Post Creole Cottage witnessed all the history of New Orleans. Built between 1732 and 1772, and it's still alive. But it's filled with the dead 
and the living. We're standing in front of the most known haunted house in the South, the Ghost House on Royal, where the torturous Madame LaLaurie once lived and actually still lives in spirit form. This was featured on American Horror Story. Not the actual house, because they wouldn't let them film the actual house. You cannot go in the actual house, for it is a private home. It is not a museum, as written incorrectly in that lovely coven series of American Horror Story. Madame LaLaurie is definitely the most well-known ghost. And inside this house, there are still hauntings because of the horrors of yesteryear. I'm not sure if there's any dancing with the dead. 40 rooms, 12,000 square foot mansion. Royal and Governor Nichols Street. Long ago, she moved in in 1832. It was originally built by my great, 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 great aunt, Emily Trusclair, who got these lands and lots as her dowry gift. She decided she couldn't live here and sold it to the lady in question. It's a good thing look up at that roof. That is where a neighbor watched Madame Laurie chase a young servant girl around the age of eight with a bloody cowhide in her hand. All the way up to the roof. She beat her into the eaves of the roof. The neighbor covered her eyes. She did not know if Madame pushed or if the girl leapt to escape. Either way, she fell to her death. The little girl's ghost still falls in a spiraling demise to this day. Madame Laurie is the true star spirit star, the beautiful woman that no one could suspect could possibly cause any harm to a fly, more or less a human. The spirit of Madame LaLaurie was much darker. The whole situation sordid and still talked about and confused to this day. I write quite a lot about the ghost house and royal in the book. Madame Lori is not alone, for her slaves are still inside. There are some of them who get to torture her now, and some that she still tortures as well. Back and forth inside that house, there are some of the slaves and others. The most famous ghost number two would be Julie, the octroon mistress, also on Royal, sharing a building with the famous Blue Dog Gallery. Julie, the octroon mistress. Julie, the naked ghost. Julie, the ghost of forbidden love, is our Romeo and Juliet story. She was so in love with the man that she lived with. It was illegal to marry between the races. When he said that he would marry in the morning and she spent the night on the roof, she went through with it. But it was an ice storm out that night and she died up there, froze to death. He died not long after her broken heart. Here she comes close on nights when it's cold. Look, her head is cocked to the side. Ectoplasmic Julie in spirit form. But we see her. We see her in the courtyard, we see her in the balcony, we see her up on the roof. 732 Royal is quite haunted, but she's a sweet spirit, a kid in a candy store type of spirit. She loves to look outside and go out and see the real world. The modern world intrigues her, surrounding the Vucare, the old world of yesteryear. She watches out everything. She walks on the roof of this house, but other spirits walk on the roof of the other. She is not alone. She is known to walk on the roof naked. Though I have done haunted overnights, I have done seance, I have done TV shows and paranormal investigations, and me or the, her roommate who lives up there now, Gwinnett, have never seen her nude. Marie Laveau, the most known name in New Orleans when it comes to spirits, has her name on these apartments right next door to the property she once lived in. In fact, the property that seven generations of Laveaux lived and died in. It seems that she used some lots that surrounded hers besides the cottage that is now long gone, but many things are named after Marie Laveau. This is the beautiful young Marie Laveau. This is where she is buried now with her daughter or daughters and many other family members in St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. 
It was traditional to mark X's out of brick dust, soft chalk dust. But tourists over the years started using paints and oils and forgot the meanings behind the ritual so much so people began to say it was never real to begin with, but it was. Offerings were given from the heart. And that is, alas, no more. Tomb is totally restored. And you can give offerings of prayer and of good deeds. And she will still help you and heal you. For she was a healer in life and she is still a healer in afterlife. She was doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, all rolled into one. And she did a little matchmaking on the side. She was said to have a bit to do with that Julie story, by the way. Some say she was the only mistake that Marie Laveau ever did, but it wasn't a mistake. If Julie went to her for a love ritual, uh, she wanted the man for eternity. And I'm sure she got him. Are they still seen together, sometimes an embrace on top of that roof? It was for eternity, but not the way she had in mind. I don't believe it was a mistake. I believe that Marie Laveau gave her what she asked for. Marie Laveau did not have a connection that anyone knows of to Madame LaLaurie, but that was written in that American horror story. People weren't too happy, both Marie Laveau or the other, about that show. I think it was miscast and miswritten, and they got their just desserts. A little bit of negative paranormal activity for those that were in the show. Alas, don't lie about the spirits. They don't understand the word fiction. Anyway, this is where the cottage used to be. In 1903, it was torn down. Most of Marie Laveau's infamy was behind those walls. And much of her history and residual energy still lingers there. At the New Orleans Historic Voodoo Museum, Charles Gandolfo founded that in 1971. In 1971, he was one of the few people that took voodoo as a serious part of New Orleans culture. It was long before they started teaching and it's part of world religion classes in college. He was an incredible artist as well as a kind of a Papa Laba of New Orleans voodoo, opening the door to many priests and practitioners that came here from other parts of the country and giving legitimacy back to something that had been disdained by many of the people. It was always in the closet, voodoo, or hoodoo. But uh, everyone knew about Marie Laveau. Everyone knows about going to her tomb. And inside the beauty museum, you see the portrait, but you see spirits, and that's what I wrote about here. My uh, sisters worked at the museum for 35 years. I was there for quite some time. Voodoo Charlie, deceased in 2001, he is there in spirit form, and he is definitely not alone, and is in good company. Rilavo pops in here every once in a while for a, you know, a celebrity visit. But the resident spirits are the ghost cat, Le Chat Noir, the black cat that wanders around. He's not the only animal spirit, for there's also... There's also Le Grand Crocodile. See the gator man in the back? He perks up every once in a while and has something to say. As we go back, you'll see the artifacts, and some of these artifacts have living residual energy that wakes up, especially when they're fed or sung to or certain stories are told around them. I've had artifacts jump off the wall at me, and they didn't fall down. They jumped long ago, depending on who I was touring there with. Now, you, the snake cage is back in the, there behind the carts. Since uh, the recent docent of the snakes have died, Mr. John or Dr. John, there are no physical snakes in the museum anymore, but the ghosts, the snakes, were there for a very long time, and they will be there now. Inside the cage, there's spirit lingers, and in the courtyard, too. There's Rose, queen and of the past, and of Mammy Water, a Mami Issa. My favorite voodoo king on that picture there, that would be Dr. Jim. Dr. Jim Alexander. King Alexander. Many artifacts, many altars, all with objects that are imbued with power of those that use the objects and the spirits that were called upon. Oh, look there. See that cement? That used to be a door, and that was an entrance into the slave quarters area. This slave quarters area to the right would be where I had most of my encounters. The bed that I had was right on the other side of that old entranceway, and that's where the little boy who died of yellow fever popped up in my arms. There's also where the Peeping Tom spirit is, and a few others. A nasty haint that drains some energy of people and almost took them down. 
had to be banished from that room. And there's Elgato. Oh, the corner. That's where the ghost snake was. It showed me where the spell was hidden that tried to close the museum. Ghost snakes everywhere. I gotta go home. Huh? We're gonna do a ritual to salute everyone in every chapter in the book. All the spirits. So why don't you come join us for that part? And definitely... 1895. Edward built the house. He's one of the spirits. You might remember Henriette the Skull from Paris. She's in there. A couple of my snakes over there. friend that popped up today, George, and a uh, friend's mother who died today. We asked her to be blessed, going away, but she is welcome to come in and say hello. Any other spirits that are with our friends that are here today that have something to say, this is the time we're going to connect with you. We're going to try to connect with you through writing, through sound, through visuals, through application, whatever. So we invite you all in today, anyone that's in the book, all those spirits who have come here before, come in and tell us. No, but this is This is how we get a message. So for those that like the old ways, this would be it. We'll do automatic writing, and then later we'll all convene to do some electronic stuff, if you so choose. So, again, to the spirits of the house and the spirits that walk with you, we ask them to come and join us in this session, too. So, blessings. We shall be back. Just keep on coming. Say it's speedy. Okay, next bit I we're going on an expedition tonight. He was just touched. If the boo bear says that when no one's around, that means he's been touched in the last few minutes. Oh my god. area. We call the spirits, the nature spirits that do surround and protect us. We call you to come into the house too. The communication either through electronic devices, automatic writing, direct voice phenomena, or what some people call disembodied voices. We ask for physical, spiritual, and um, electronic connection. Yeah. All good. Oh, oh, we got haze and history. Edward built the building here. Eileen, Eileen, are you here? I know y'all aren't used to working with this stuff kind of electronic device. Um, if you would prefer us to use another method, tell us. Through there. Yeah. Tell us. Through there. Yeah. 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 Ye
garlic. Now, I have garlic strum hanging over my doors of my bed in my room, so I'll even go that old school. But cook with it and carry it in a pouch. Garlic has something called elicit in it. It kind of cleans and clears the blood, so it's very physically healthy for you, but it's spiritually healthy as well. Wards off demons, monsters, vampires, and, you know, ex-husband, whatever. Whatever you have to get rid of. So use the garlic, cook with the garlic. When you cook with the garlic, talk to it, tell it to remove all the stuff but internally and externally that's not serving your highest good. Always pray over, visualize, and release the energy of all the herbs. All the herbs have a physical and spiritual, raise it. I got my, uh, my favorite thing. So you smash garlic, ah. And just as you do with onions, you save the peelings. Onions and garlic, when you burn them, burn them in the oven stove. Think that's for prosperity. You want to bring a little money home and have, keep a little protection around you and nothing like, mmm, smelling that crushed garlic. And then you burn these onion peelings, garlic peelings. Prosperity. A present, huh? The present. I haven't seen it yet. Ugh. This is the good. What is this? I don't know. Open it up, Mary. Don't struggle. I was told. Don't let it beat you. What the? Hey, don't shadow into my into my goatees. Go away. Oh, I gotta stick my hand in this. This is being brave. Oh wait, it's in plastic. Uh, what is that? There's a gift, and it's fresh. And it's still alive. Is that a crab? No, it's a gator hand. Oh, shh, look at that. From Lafitte, man, it's still soft. We can cook it. We can cook it with the. You can throw it in there with the shrimp, but it's a. Oh, look at the gator hand. Looks like a. Looks like a monster. It was like, like the lizard man. Ten foot gator. Ten foot gator. Wow. So what it's are you a gonna gift. do with that, man? I'm gonna mummify it, and I'm gonna dry it out, and I'm gonna use it as good juju to draw things towards us, to protect the area, to, you know, just like alligators do as they spread out in their lair. This has got the web feet, web toes. Um, oh, don't do that. <laughs> is there anything else in there? Ice. 